Hey everyone, I uh, just wanted to post a, uh, a new video here, it's been a while. Um, recently acquired a uh, new camera here, it's a Sony HDR, I believe a CX160 it's called. And I really haven't had a chance to play around with it yet. Um, and I uh, did a little electrical work here in the basement over the weekend, I figured I'd film it and uh, see it, check the quality of it and you know, just try to play around with some of the features on it. Um, ran a new circuit over here to the corner of uh, of this room and uh, I'll get a little more into it in detail right now uh, it's a 20 amp dedicated circuit this is going to be for a freezer uh, a little extra storage that we're gonna have down here in the basement uh, to uh, kinda take the burden off the upstairs re refrigerator a little bit uh, we have a side-by-side -side and uh, you guys are too familiar with that but doesn't get you a lot of storage in the freezer side, so this is definitely going to come in handy. Um, so basically, it's a 20 amp home run circuit. This is the only receptacle on this line. Uh, cord here feeding the freezer. Um, it is, well, as a 20, uh, 20 amp circuit, has 12 gauge wire, as you can see up here, the yellow Romex. Uh, I got three-quarter plastic conduit mounted on the wall here. Uh, it's got a, you know, your Romex connector on top there. I got a threaded coupler to slip, to slip it onto the three-quarter conduit coming down here. Um, down to a uh, box that I mounted on the concrete uh, with a duplex outlet. All right. Um, and before anyone starts going nuts with this, Yes, I know that you're technically supposed to have a GFCI in a basement, this being the unfinished side. Um, but, uh, as some of you might know, being that this is a freezer with a motor and a compressor in it, um, you can get something called nuisance trips on a GFCI, and uh, the motor, when it initially starts up, can you know, cause a surge uh, through the uh, GFCI and trip it out. And... Uh, since we're not down here all that often in this freezer, uh, I don't want that ever happening and having all of our food spoil. So one thing I probably should do is convert this over to a single outlet. So when the freezer is plugged in, there is no other accessibility to this outlet. Uh, that way, you know, kind of kind of makes it a little more protected in that someone can't come in here, plug something in, it'd be a shock hazard. So just wanted to cover that. So, uh... This piece of Romex runs along the sill plate up here. As you can see, it's tacked on. Uh, runs all the way around and down this um, to the other end of this opening here, which I will show you right now. And uh, I'll bring it through here. So basically, it's all stapled behind this wall. All right. And it comes out in here. Uh, right across the top, still stapled, wraps up down around here, down the side here, and into the panel, into this Romex connector right here. There is two lines, I'll explain that in a second. And inside my panel, I installed a new breaker down here. This is a twin 20 amp, because like I said, I do have two lines, I ran two circuits, I'll show you that in a second. Right, and as you can see, I'm starting to run out of space here. This is only a 150 amp panel. I'm probably going to have to upgrade to a 200 amp sooner or later because we're looking to add central air to the house and there isn't going to be enough slots unless they start twinning up some of these. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of twinning up breakers. I don't know how you guys feel about that if you want to comment. If that's any, uh, is it a bad idea to do or is it okay to do? Um, I know the panel starts getting a little cluttered when you start adding all these extra conductors in here, so... Anyway, that's something to look at in the future. But like I said, I ran two new circuits. One for the refrigerator. And as you can see, I, uh, the two lines are taped together and stapled up there. Uh, okay, so the refrigerator one is that one running right there, the yellow. The other one I ran is coming off right here. Goes in the wall through that, that hole up there is stapled down the wall here and comes down to this new switch I put in. Um, what I'm going to be doing with this is installing new lights in the basement. So you have your feed in, which is that line, and your feed out, which is this line here. 
that's all staple then it runs over to this new um, uh, fluorescent fixture that I put in if you guys are looking for a good fixture for your basement check this out I got this in Home Depot for I think it was like $19.99 so 20 bucks it is a two bulb uh, fluorescent four foot fixture and for 20 bucks you really can't go wrong and it throws a nice amount of light down in the area here what I'm trying to eliminate is all these I got these you know uh, I'll bring you back over here. I got these pull chain lights all over the, the unfinished part of the basement and I, I come on focus I got these uh, I find them to be a real pain in the ass when you're carrying a bunch of boxes down here and you got to go around and throw all these on a switch over here that I flip on and all the lights will go on it's a lot easier it is a double box and I have one switch installed right now for this light as you can see, I got a piece of tape over the other switch location right now because um, in the upcoming weeks I'm going to be putting another switch in that box and run another line off of it. And I'm going to have two switches. The first switch will control this light and I'm going to mount another fixture in this area. That'll be one switch. And then the other switch is going to be all the lights in the back part of the basement here. So that's basically it. Uh, one tip before I finish this up here that I want to offer. Um... Uh, for people that are unfamiliar, use PVC down in the basement and on the walls on, on concrete if you're not going to be studding a wall out in front of this. Reason being, if you've ever noticed metal boxes that have been mounted onto concrete when uh, you know electrical work is done, come back in about five, ten years and take a look at that metal box. It is going to be a rusted, corroded mess because obviously concrete is always moist and curing over time it's going to react with that metal and it's it's going to look horrible when all of a sudden done. if you ever have to get into that box to do any work the screws are going to break um, it's like I said it's going to be a corroded mess use PVC it won't corrode obviously because it's plastic and uh, your installation will stay neat and clean uh, during the duration of its life so just a little tip I wanted to offer and uh, that's about it I'll make another video in a few weeks when I add the rest of the lights down here uh, one final note that I uh, I want to touch on is that please do not use this video as a how-to that is not the intention of this my main intention of shooting this is just to demonstrate different methods of going about uh, a project like this uh, the way I look at it as is maybe you're looking at YouTube right now because you're thinking of tackling a project like this in the future maybe uh, a way I did something here is something you didn't think of and you know it sheds a better light on things and helps you along in that project that is the main intention it is not a how-to if you don't know anything about electricity you should probably hire an electrician to get this type of work done alright uh, as always thanks for watching Please rate, comment, and subscribe if you have any questions. I'll be glad and happy to answer them uh, the best I can. And if you have any suggestions uh, or any other type of information about this, uh, please let me know. Thanks a lot and take care.